you please to join me in the biggest round of applause to welcome Hazel Newhouse. huge events with celebrities and the latest must-have products. But during all of this madness, we were exploring life behind the scenes, living self-sufficiently. The mummy blogger lifestyle just didn't fulfil me anymore. I started to write about saving money and saving the planet. I was getting my children involved in our adventures and they loved it. After a few years of being a mummy blogger, my audience started to change. No, evolve. I realised this when, surprisingly, I was nominated for a Green Blog Award back in 2016, which I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Self-sufficiency is more than just growing food. It's about teaching our children and peers about the joys of fending for oneself and realising that you, and are an amazing human being who doesn't have to rely on other people or huge corporations to survive. It's about teaching our children and our friends that their future can be a happy one, one that isn't filled with consumerism or money. Would you like to live more self-sufficiently? Perhaps you dream of a life where you put you and your family first rather than worrying about what other people think about you and your hard-earned cash. Read books, talk to people who share your passions, get outside in the open air and observe the world around you. That is how you can take baby steps to become self-sufficient. As your confidence grows, start to do more and more things that will benefit your daily life. Learn a useful hobby, I crochet and I enjoy making household items. I'm particularly good at dishcloths because they're just squares. <laughs> but I need them. And after you've started to play around a little, start to grow your own food. Start small. Start finding alternatives to shop bought products. The sense of fulfillment when you know that you don't have to add tomatoes to your shopping list because you grew them yourself feels better than any drug and any massive shopping trip where you're spending money on things you don't need. Sorry. Have you ever watched The Good Life? <laughs> Tom and Barbara are seen as bonkers by their neighbours, Margot and Jerry. They're the laughing stock of the street, and I pity my neighbours because they are Margot and Jerry, and me and my husband are Tom and Barbara. <laughs> they have their ups and downs together, but they succeed. Watching The Good Life as a child does entertain, but watching it, as an ad, watching it as an adult, I'm inspired. Tom and Barbara are a couple who love each other dearly. They support each other through thick and thin, but they are happy because they no longer have to rely on anybody else to live a wonderful and fulfilling life. My husband and I, we love each other dearly. We support each other and we work as a team. Yes, my husband does run a successful business, but we only have each other and our children. Many children in the UK have no idea where their food comes from. They know it can be purchased from the supermarket, 
in a clean, sterile, plastic-coated environment, but they don't truly know where that food has come from. My four-year-old can identify different types of seeds and what those seeds will grow into. They can visit the chickens and collect the eggs in the garden, and they can freely walk around our land and pick fruit and vegetables to eat unwashed as they please. They can get as muddy as they like, and yet they never get ill. They are the happiest children that I know. In 2017, I was featured in an article for the Sun newspaper. The story featured how we were using cloth toilet paper to save money, alongside using cloth nappies, cloth baby wipes, and cloth feminine products. Suddenly, I became a laughing stock overnight. Every single radio station and online news source was featuring me. I was even invited to talk on national television, which I politely turned down. But I regret not being able to do so again because I'm fancy. At the time, I felt humiliated. There's no other way to put it. All I wanted to do at that moment when I told my story to the Sun newspaper was to inform people how they could become a little more self-sufficient. But with humiliation came pride. The strangers started to message me, saying that they too used cloth, but that they had been inspired to use cloth too. Okay, my example is an extreme one, one that not many people would think about doing, but it started to plant the seed in people's heads, where they realised that they too could make small changes that would make a massive difference to their lives and their wallets. I realised I was inviting people to self-sufficiency, and I'd almost become a poster girl for the modern self-sufficiency movement. The only thing I would be a poster girl for, actually. <laughs> for every hundred people that laughed at me, one person looked up to me. Those few people made me proud. The hundreds of, hundreds of trolls forgot about me overnight. Short period of time passed, and the news stories got less and less on my, on my feed. What people can do, spotted your belief again. But I remember the positive messages from the small percentage of people. It felt amazing to know that I had opened up people's minds. Don't ever feel guilty for what you are today. Don't feel guilty about what you were yesterday. Feel excited about what you will become tomorrow. You have the power to change you. You have the power to change other people's lives and the world around you. If we all work together, it will be easier. And in a world drowning in plastic and consumerism, I think it needs a little bit more self-sufficiency by all of us. Our future generation depends on it. We need to make self-sufficiency the new normal. Thank you very much. I think this is a good thing. <laughs>